Today we're going to be talking about power versus weight and what it means in terms of acceleration and top speed for cars. Power to weight ratio is the thing most used to compare cars in terms of acceleration. And people assume that cars with the same sort of power to weight are going to accelerate at the same sort of rate. And I'm going to discuss that a bit today and we're going to get into what the physics are behind that and why having more weight and more power is actually beneficial for all up acceleration. Now to be clear, for the duration of this video, I'm gonna be talking about cars with the same power to weight ratio. Obviously, if you have the same weight and you increase the power, your car will accelerate faster. And if you have the same power and decrease the weight, your car will also accelerate faster. So to start with, if we imagine the forces on the car, we have a few different things occurring during the acceleration run. When we're at standstill and we're launching initially, all we have is our acceleration provided by the power from the engine, so our forward force along the tires, and we've got the weight of the car going down, and then there'll be the mass of the car pulling us back as we go forward. Then as the speeds get higher, our aerodynamic forces start kicking. So we'll have our downforce coming in, as well as our drag from various parts of the car. So to look at what the sort of equations are for this, they're very, very simple. Um, the most common one from Newton's laws, F equals MA, and that describes the acceleration of the car as a result of its mass and its force. Then our grip of the tires, which is FR equals mu N. And this is the amount of tractive force we have available at the tires before they'll start to spin. So at low speeds, we're gonna assume that our car has enough power to spin the tires. So we'll be at this limit. So you can imagine at low speeds, if we equate these two, we get M a equals mu and n is mass of the car times the gravitational force pulling down. So it's mu m g. So we've got m on both sides of the equation. We cancel this out. We get a equals to mu g. So this means that if we are traction limited in the car, the acceleration of the car will equal our coefficient of friction at the ground times the gravitational constant, which is a constant. So essentially, that's our acceleration in G, regardless of what the weight of the car is. So the weight of the car does not change the traction limited grip as long as there is no downforce force involved. So we're at low speed or stationary. As we increase the speed though, we'll end up with this normal force increasing faster than this side of the equation, because obviously the mass of the car is not increasing. So you'll end up with the acceleration actually being dependent on the mass of the car then as you go faster if you have downforce. So if you have downforce, you'll accelerate faster if your car is lighter. Once we're no longer grip limited, our acceleration becomes a function of our power. So we'll end up with um, power equals force times velocity. Force equals power on velocity, m a equals power on velocity, and then a equals power to weight, which is power on the mass, over velocity. So we can see here that as long as the power to weight is held constant here, we'll end up with the same acceleration between cars, again, if there's no downforce applied, once we're at low speed, but we're no longer traction limited. The problem is here is that with these aerodynamic forces, as the speed increases, the aerodynamic forces increase. The most notable one being this drag, a half rho v squared SCD. Now what these terms are is the, the coefficient of drag there, CD, and the frontal area, S. Now these ones are related to the velocity, so let's not worry about that. But if we're just comparing between two cars, if we have two cars, they're gonna be of similar size even if you increase the power. So if you have a 2,000 kilo, 1,000 horsepower car and a 1,000 kilo, 500 horsepower car, they're gonna be about the same frontal area. So let's ignore the S term because they're gonna be the same for comparison between the two cars. The coefficient of drag will change depending on the car geometry. Now, obviously, as you have an engine with more power, you'll end up with a higher cooling requirement. Cooling generally, has a drag penalty associated with it. So this means that you'll have slightly higher drag coefficient, but you won't end up with double the drag coefficient on the car because the majority of the drag is just caused by the shape of the body and pushing the air around the actual cabin and stuff. So what we end up with is that 
The car that's lighter with less power has a higher component of drag on it than the car that's heavier. Well, they both got exactly the same component of drag, we just assume CD as being the same. But because the car is lighter weighs half as much, we now have, and it has half as much power, the drag component is a far more significant portion of the power than it is of a car with a thousand horsepower. And what this is basically saying is that at higher speeds, once your drag is becoming a significant effect, so say you're accelerating from 200 k's an hour to 300 k's an hour, you're going to see that a heavier car with the same power to weight will actually accelerate faster than a lighter car. Obviously due to suspension limitations and stuff like that, the heavier car is going to suffer when it comes to cornering. But we're kind of going to ignore that because we're just dealing with straight line acceleration. And also another limitation is that the coefficient of friction will change. But again, for straight line acceleration, if you just fit wider tires to the heavier car, it should end up with roughly the same coefficient of friction as the lighter car. So you can get away with considering those equal for these purposes. What are the fundamental takeaways from this? Well, at very low speeds, two cars with the same power to weight ratio will accelerate at the same speed. If there's downforce in the middle speed range while you're still traction limited, the car with the lighter weight will then accelerate faster. But then once you're no longer traction limited, the car with the heavier weight will then accelerate faster as the drag is a lesser component of the total power. Cars like the Bugatti Veyron illustrate my point very well where it's insanely heavy, has a ridiculous top speed, but still has acceleration in zero to 100 to match a lot of other cars. Or something like a, a Lotus Elise, which is known for having a very similar power to weight ratio to a lot of other more supercars with higher speeds, but has very low top speed itself just because its total power output is very low. So you can see that here that these power to weights between a lot of these cars are very comparable, and they still end up with very different top speed and acceleration characteristics. Obviously, again, all-wheel drive versus rear-wheel drive will factor into this, but for the sake of this comparison, I'm ignoring that as well. The principle is still gonna stay the same. As long as your two cars are on equal footing for comparison, what I previously said, apply. Well, that's power and weight explained for acceleration. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button and click subscribe to see more videos like this. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.